If you missed fifth grade graduation because you had jury duty, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you think fast food is hitting a deer at 65 miles an hour, you might be a redneck. If somebody tells you you have something in your teeth and you take them out to see what it is, you might be a redneck. What's up, beautiful people? Welcome to Playing to the Back with Jordan Black, episode three. I am your host, Jordan Black. Today we'll be analyzing Jeff Foxworthy and his iconic joke structure, you might be a redneck. Before we get into the video, be sure to like this video. Go like my page after the video is done. If you're watching this on Facebook Watch, be sure to hit the bell notification next to my name. That way you're notified whenever I post new stuff. Now this is from a panel from the Blue Collar Comedy Tour with Jeff, Bill Engvall, Larry the Cable Guy, and Ron White. I tried to find an actual stand-up clip of Jeff Foxworthy doing this joke, but they are surprisingly hard to come by. Not to mention all those videos are like 12 years old and the quality is just terrible. So while this technically isn't stand-up, it still shows the technique pretty unobstructed. I am not only a comedy nerd, but I am also a math nerd. So today, we're gonna to be talking about comedic equations. If your only experience in online dating is realizing that Tinder's algorithm is basically just Google PageRank, you might be a math nerd. So I have a theory that joke structures are pretty similar to mathematical equations. The simpler the joke, the simpler the equation. That's why I went with you might be a redneck. Very simple joke structure. So let me explain. One plus one equals two, right? So one plus one is the setup of a joke. And everything that comes after the equal sign is the punchline. But if I went on stage and said one plus one equals two, I wouldn't be doing stand-up comedy. I'd be teaching a lecture to children. So in the example of you might be a redneck, that'd be like saying, if you work outside and you fail to protect your neck from harmful UV rays, you might be a redneck. While completely accurate, that's not exactly challenging anyone's brain or forcing someone to see something in a different perspective. If you think in sync is where your dirty dishes are, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you take your dog for a walk and you both use the tree at the corner, you might be a redneck. If you think a 401k is your mother-in-law's bra size, <laughs> you might be a redneck. One interesting thing here is the answer is actually moved to the front of the equation. Now, whenever he says it, he says, if you think in sync is where the dirty dishes are, one plus one, you might be a redneck equals two. The audience already understands you might be the redneck is the answer to the equation. They already have that expectation going into the jokes. So effectively, it is, you might be a redneck if in sync is where you think the dirty dishes are. So this equation looks like two equals one plus one. It's the same equation, but presented in a different way. If your dad's cell number has nothing to do with a telephone, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you keep a flash water on the front seat of the car so you can reach your kids in the back seat of the car. <laughs> They're like, can you do that? Is that okay? No, don't, don't do it. Now the whole one plus one equals two thing is getting a little boring. So I change it up. Now my equation is parentheses seven minus six, close parentheses, plus parentheses two times 0.5, close parentheses, equals two. Effectively, this is the same equation, seven minus six equals one, so there's the first one, plus two times 0.5 is also one, so one plus one equals two. It's the same thing, but I give you a little backstory as to how we ended up at one plus one equals two. Also, rather than dividing two by one, I multiply two by 0.5. Effectively, this achieves the same outcome, it's cutting two in half, but I decided to use a non-traditional method to add a little flavor to the equation. Now this is where comics really start to tinker with a joke. They start moving the answer around, hiding bits of the equation right in front of you. They start doing algebra, you know, solve for x. If x plus one equals two, what is x? Still the same equation, still the same answer at the end of it, but it's more about how do we get to one of those initial variables now. Or they might be searching for a common denominator. You know, this thing and that thing aren't all that different. If you've ever been accused of lying through your tooth, <laughs> you might be a redneck. 
If you work without a shirt on, and so does your husband. <laughs> you might be a redneck. If an episode of Walker, Texas Ranger changed your life, <laughs> you might be a redneck. Now the important thing in comedy equations and math equations, show your work, dummy. God, I sound like my high school algebra teacher, Miss Gabriel. Shout out to Miss Gabriel, you're awesome. Your setup had better have all the variables that are needed to arrive at your final answer. I'm sure you've all been in a situation like this where someone's telling you a joke or a story and it's not all that funny and they go, well, my coworker Jerry's always late to work. So that's why that's funny. I don't work with Jerry, dude. So if me knowing that Jerry is always late to work is important and you know that I'm not aware of this, then you would better include that at the beginning of your equation rather than trying to tack it on at the end to make everything make sense. If there is an electronic singing fish in more than three rooms of your home, <laughs> you might be a redneck. So what makes math interesting is that it's a universal language. There is nowhere in the universe where one doesn't equal one. Seriously, if an alien showed up and they had eight tentacles and you have eight toes, the spaceship landed on the other two. Even if they had different words to express that value, the value is still the same. Comedy does not have universal values. Math is only trying to solve for one numerical value. While there can be hundreds of levels of variables in a joke, and each of those have different measurables and scales. Language. If you and I aren't speaking the same language, you're not going to have the proper ability to understand my joke. Even if we both speak English. If I say something is flat, and you think deflated, and I think a flat face, we're both speaking different languages there. And that's gonna affect the outcomes that both of us get in our equations. The tonality of your voice can completely change the way that somebody perceives what you're saying. I helped my Uncle Jack off a horse. I helped my Uncle Jack off a horse. Totally different messages. Life experience. If someone grew up in Brooklyn, they might not have ever seen a singing electronic fish. Now ultimately, even the simplest joke is far too complicated to break down into an efficient equation. And really, there's far too many ways to skin that cat. Like, I didn't even go into more abstract equations. Like, 1 plus 1 equals 11. Now, mathematically, entirely not true. But visually, a 1 and a 1 combined makes 11. I digress. Hopefully you learned a thing or two, and now you can go and watch your favorite comedian and have a new way of looking at what we do. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button. Comment below on what comedian you'd like to see next. Be sure to like my page, Jordan Black Comedy. I post tons of funny stuff there. Or if YouTube's more your style, I'll be posting over there now. That's gonna do it for today's episode. I am Jordan Black. See you next time.